Texas. How can we best optimize the inevitable occurrences? I don't really know how to answer that question, VV. How you can optimize it. I do know this. I know that no matter what is planned to occur, whatever is scripted in our holography, I know that it won't affect me if I don't want it to. I know that I have great latitude to be where I want to be and to suffer what I think I need to suffer or be immune from any damage. Uh, I just don't, I do not believe that I have survived too much in this world. I should not be alive today. So it tells me that there is, there is a, there is a fundamental interaction between the soul and psyche in between the soul and the simulacrum. And it's interactive. It Listen, it might be negative default programming, and it might be the AI system that operates this, what we call the demiurge, but I also know it works for you because it works for me. And I have done impossible things, and I have survived impossible circumstances. So I can't really answer this question and try to give you some type of formula by which, I mean, it's, I'm just like Nike. I just do it and reality commiserates. It's a, I can't plan for the future because in planning for the future is an, is an admission that, that I don't know that, that I'm not sufficient to survive it on my own by will alone. I'm up to, I know there's a lot of preppers that listen to me and I, and I get that. But often the people that do that are doing it for the benefit of others. What I mean is, is like, I'll give you an example. I told you guys before in a video that one of the most fascinating series of books I ever read was by William Johnstone. He wrote a series of books called Out of the Ashes. In chapter one of the very first book, 70% of the world is nuked. It's a nuclear ICBM exchange. 24 books later, he, General Ben Rains, who is not in the army anymore, he retired, but during the whole 24 books is how humans come back and begin surviving, but they go through some shit because of all the new post-apocalyptic cult, cults and the starvation and people, people, it's a, it's a dystopian society. People are pulling out World War II vintage tanks, jeeps, mach APCs, machines, because all that machinery can be fixed and be, be used and, and all that, but nothing as far as, as, as electronic technology was good anymore. So uh, William Johnstone's book, Out of the Ashes, man, paints a really good picture. But, but the ones who, who did the prepping, the ones who, uh, who, who stockpiled all this stuff, or in most circumstances, even in that series of books, they're not the ones that survived. They were the first ones taken out if they did survive by locals who had nothing. It's so, yeah, it's pretty harrowing. It's a very disturbing series of books. It give it paints a very good picture of what is going to happen after an after an all out mad mutually assured destruction nuclear ICBM exchange. It's it's a very entertaining book, but it's got some harrowing shit in it too. He kept it very realistic. William Johnstone, he's not alive today, but that series of books, Out of the Ashes, is one of the best series of books I've ever read. But I will say it's not for everybody. It's got some disturbing content because it's very realistic. The man, the man spent a lot of his life studying military hardware. He got the details right. So, but anyway, it's, it's hard. To, it's, I really can't. It's hard to answer that question. Because we're all so diverse, we're all so different, and we all view and, and, and interact with with reality itself in fundamentally different ways. Some and it's just whatever. I mean, I can't say it better than this: what you resist persists. If you don't, if you haven't mastered the art of letting go, then you probably have a lot of problems in your life, and that goes for anybody. I'm not talking to anybody in particular. Letting go, letting go of things, not letting them own, own your emotional energy is the best way to be immune from them.